the periodic review system the periodic review system contrasts with the continuous review system in this system instead of fixing the order quantity q and the reorder point r we fix the review period capital r as you see in this figure here and the target inventory level t the review period refers to the time that elapses between two consecutive orders or two consecutive times that we review the inventory so this system works as follows the inventory position is not continuously monitored rather we review the inventory position at fixed periods of time and that period between two consecutive reviews is known as the review period if you observe this figure you will see that the review periods are constant or they are equal to each other whereas the reorder points they are not the same from one order cycle to the next the reorder points vary that's because the reordering happens at the same time that we review we review the inventory position whatever the inventory position is we can compute the difference between the target inventory level and the inventory position and that difference is ordered that becomes the order quantity because of this the review uh, the reorder points vary from order cycle to order cycle and so do the order quantities along with them you know, the lead time to replenishment also varies from one order cycle to the next so putting it all together the order quantity and reorder point can vary in the periodic review system whereas the target inventory t and the review period r are fixed as policies so the first question we ask is how do we compute the average order quantity so here we talk about the average order quantity because the actual order quantity is variable so we again use the evoq formula the evoq formula is used the appropriate one to find the average order quantity or q average next we compute the review period we take the average order quantity that we just computed and divide it by the mean demand the mean rate of demand so this ratio q average by the average of demand gives us the review period and this review period is fixed as a policy it essentially represents the time between consecutive orders from this we compute another period known as the protection period now this protection period is important in the pre periodic review system because we don't monitor the inventory level closely so sometimes it may happen that before the next review happens there can be a stock out if we depend merely on the lead time or the review period hence we add the lead time to the review period and consider that as the protection period so the, the average protection period is defined as the review period plus the mean lead time and the protection period is the one that's used to compute the target inventory level unlike the review period the protection period is not a constant instead it has some variability its standard deviation is taken to be the same as the standard deviation of lead time because r in this formula is a constant so to compute the target inventory level we first compute the protection period demand the idea of protection period demand is analogous to that of lead time demand which we have seen earlier so we use similar formulas as we used to compute the mean and the variance of lead time demand so here we compute uh, so we use mu d sigma d mu p sigma p to find mu p d and sigma p d the mean and the variance of protection period demand we also take into account any stock out proportion or service level that has been given to us uh, and uh, we use this to compute the 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 target inventory level the target inventory level is inverse distribution function of the service level so if it is continuous we directly apply that inverse function if the protection period demand is modeled as discrete then we compute t as the lowest value of the protection period demand which is at least equal to the f inverse of the service level now in the special case when protection period demand is modeled as normally distributed we compute t as mu pd plus the z of the service level multiplied by sigma pd 
From this, once we compute the target inventory level, we can assess the safety stock in the system. The safety stock is the difference between the target inventory level and the mean protection period demand. Uh, if, again, protection period demand is normally distributed, then the average safety stock is the Z of the service level multiplied by the standard deviation of protection period demand. So we keep in mind that what we are computing is not a constant value, unlike in the continuous review system, rather, because the reorder point is variable and the, the protection period demand is also variable, the safety stock that we compute is a, is a variable quantity. And what we are doing now is to com compute its average value. Next, the average reorder point. The average reorder point is nothing but the difference between the target inventory level and the order quantity or the average order quantity. So as you can see on this vertical axis, we have the reorder point here, and this represents the order quantity. The sum of the reorder point and the order quantity is the target inventory level. So you can imagine that the average reorder point would be the target inventory level minus the average order quantity. Uh, as we said earlier, the actual order quantity varies from cycle to cycle. So we can compute that, or it is computed as this the target inventory level minus the current inventory position at the point of review. So from the equations that we developed for the average reorder point and the average safety stock, we can say that uh, T can be computed in two ways. First, as the sum of the average safety stock and the average protection period demand. And T is also the sum of the average reorder point and the average order quantity. So there are two different ways of computing T. Now to understand these calculations and get a better feel for them, let's do a simple example. This is a retail store called Modern Trends. The demand for a popular detergent at Modern Trends is found to be normally distributed with a mean of 289 units per month and a variance of 64. The lead time to replenish is 15 days and the business operates throughout the year. The inventory holding cost is rupees 48 per unit per year, and the cost of placing an order is rupees 200. Back ordering costs are prohibitive. Take a month to have 30 days. If a P system has to be followed with a service level of 99%, we said back ordering costs are prohibitive, so we would like the service level to be as close to 100% as possible. Determine these five things, the optimal average order quantity, the review and protection periods, the target inventory level, the average safety stock, and the average reorder point. So let's see how to compute these values. First, the average optimal order quantity. So we apply the basic UOQ formula because neither gradual replenishment nor back ordering are permitted here. So taking the D as 289, CO is 200. The, uh, the holding cost, per month is 48 divided by 12. There are 12 months in a year. So four, we get 170. This is the optimal average order quantity. In other words, the average of these Q values, Q1, Q2, Q3, the average level of order quantity would be 170. Next, the review period, this R that you see in the figure. So what is the review period? It's the average order quantity divided by the average demand. So the Average demand per month is given as 289 units. So 170 by 289, we get as 4.5882 months. And this R, 0.5882 months, is fixed as a policy. Okay, And given that a month is about 30 days, this would be roughly 17 days or so. Next, the protection period. As we saw earlier, the average protection period is the review period plus the average lead time. In this particular example, the lead time is given to us as a constant 15 days, and therefore the lead time in months would be 15 by 30, which is 0.5. So therefore the average protection period would become 1.0882. Uh, since the lead time is a constant and so is the review period, the protection period also will be a constant in this example, and that becomes equal to zero. So here, this should not be mu L, this should be sigma L, that's equal to zero. Protection period demand. 
So we now compute the parameters pertaining to production period demand. The mean of demand is 289. The sigma of demand is square root of 64 or 8. These are given to us. So using them and using the sigma mu and sigma of protection a period, we get mu PD is the mean protection period multiplied by the mean of demand, which comes to 314.5. Similarly, the standard deviation of protection period demand would become 8.35. So the mean and standard deviation of protection period demand are 314.5 and 8.35 respectively. The target inventory level T is mu PD plus the Z of, this should be 0.99, one nine is missing here, 0 0.99 multiplied by sigma PD. And that then becomes these values. This comes to 333.9. That is the target inventory level here, 333.9. The average safety stock in the system, mu S would be T minus mu PD, which is 333.9 minus 314.5. And that turns out to be about 19 units. So out of this 333.9, uh, about 19 units somewhere in between refers to the average safety stock. And finally, the average reorder point. The average reorder point is just T minus the Q average, which applying these numbers would come to 163.9. So nearly half the value. You can see that the reorder point is quite high. It's almost equal to the quantity ordered, 170, 163.9. So this uh, is a specialty of the, of the periodic review system where the reorder point is fairly high given that demand is variable and we don't review continuously because we are reviewing at fixed periods of time. Between two reviews, there can be a stock out and stock out or back ordering is prohibitive. And therefore we keep higher levels of inventory as compared to the continuous review system. So the reorder point here, it turns out to be nearly equal to the average reorder quantity. So uh, this is our discussion on the periodic review system. So we have also seen a numerical example and understood the various aspects of the periodic review system. Thank you.